G'day, it's the Monday after the Dutch Grand Prix and while all of the teams have headed off to Monza, there's one team whose cars and gear is stuck in the paddock, subject of a court order. So what's happening? Well, Haas cannot move their gear out of the Zandvoort paddock until they pay nine million US dollars to a past sponsor. You'll probably remember in 2021, Nikita Mazepin joined Haas as a driver to partner Mick Schumacher. His father's company, Ural Kali, threw in a fair whack of money sponsoring the team. And what does Ural Kali do? Well, they're a Russian potash fertilizer producer and exporter. Their logo was big on the car for 2021 and they were going to be sponsoring in 2022, but Russia invaded Ukraine and Haas decided at that point that they didn't want Ural Kali sponsoring the team. They sacked Nikita Mazepin and went a different direction. But they'd paid a whole lot of money in advance for sponsorship and naturally wanted that back. Well, Haas didn't pay it back. So for a period of just over two years, I imagine there's been a lot of backwards and forwards. Well, in June this year, Ural Kali took Haas to court in Switzerland, claiming they wanted the money back and they won that court action. On top of that, I believe they were also ordered to give Ural Kali a 2021 car. Now that's not unusual for uh, teams to write contracts where cars are given to drivers or sponsors as part of a deal. Now as at last week, Ural Kali had not received the money. So they got another legal team here in the Netherlands to take them to court in this jurisdiction and they won the case and there was an order place that all of this equipment here cannot leave the Netherlands until the bill is paid. And if it wasn't paid, they could seize assets. So as of last night, when I had a chat with some PR people from Haas, they told me the money had been paid, all good, we're just waiting on a stamp from an authority. Once that stamp's received, all of these trucks and whatever's inside them can be moved to the next race in Monza. Now that's quite a distance, but whilst most of the other teams have shipped all their gear out, and there is still a bit of construction or deconstruction going on here, these four trucks remain locked solid here until they get this stamp from the local authority. And what if they just move these trucks without the stamp? Well, I imagine there are some fairly hefty penalties for that. So what I think is going to happen this morning, probably at nine o'clock when offices open, is that somebody or some people will be down at a suitable office, government office perhaps, awaiting this stamp. Once that is secured, that paperwork will be given to the Haas team and they can then get moving with these trucks and other gear that I have no doubt is around the track. But until then, there is just this deadlock for the team. Now all of this stuff needs to be at the track on Thursday for media day. They have all sorts of things like scrutineering and their garage needs to be set up. So there is a real urgency now in getting that paperwork done and getting these trucks on the road. Now, some other things from the weekend. Oh, yes, the drama on Saturday with Logan Sargent's big crash. Here's where it happened. This is the run up to the area where Logan put his wheel off into the grass and that's all it took for him to go sideways and then backwards into the barrier on the other side of the track. Now, I had three of my colleagues up there shooting. This is Christoph Holland. He was shooting from the outside of the track and took this image and I asked him afterwards what it was like and he said it was loud and the crash took time. And I've noticed that before in incidents where I've been photographing at crashes, uh, time tends to slow a little bit. Now this section of the track, there's an Armco barrier that's you know, waist height, then there's maybe a meter of no man's land before a wire catch fence and there are a couple of photographic holes. This is Jiri Krenick, he's from Prague, he's an excellent photographer. He took this series of shots of the actual incident. He had a 600mm lens so he was very tight and you see unbelievable detail in this shot. Now when you stop the clock like you do when you take a photo like this you can see some amazing details like the tyre being launched from the car. Down here you can see that the wheel is actually still tethered and that's part of the safety features that they can't come off. But a tyre, which is still heavy, has been sent hurtling into the air and luckily the catch fence caught that. Have a look at these pictures from Alessandro, a colleague from Italy. He was shooting at that spot, took these pictures before the crash and then had to take evasive action because the car was coming for him and then continued shooting here. Now Alessandro is not a stranger to this sort of action because he was in Monaco when Sergio Perez had his crash on lap one of the race this year. He's the gentleman at the bottom of the picture rendering assistance and at that time he was forced to take evasive action with Sergio's car coming towards him and he was in the exact same position on Saturday. Another interesting thing was that Logan actually sat in that car, I understand, for about a minute before he extricated himself and the fire took hold. George Russell actually went past him and indicated, hey, get out of the car. And of course, you probably heard the team radio with them telling him that the car was on fire. 
Now that practice session was stopped for a good 40 minutes to clean up that accident. What they actually have to do, much the same as they did in Monaco, is take apart the Armco barrier, take down the bent panels and replace them with brand new ones. Thankfully these poles that are in the ground are rock solid. But what happens to the car? Well that's put on the back of a flat top truck and delivered back to the pit lane where I was waiting. Now you can see on these pictures here, the car comes in on the back of the flatbed, pulls up, you can very clearly see plenty of damage. And then the Williams crew have to gather these screens to put around it. They put a tarp over the top of the car so that um, no more photos can be taken. And certainly you can't take photos of the bottom of the car because there's no access. It's then manoeuvred into the garage, the screens are placed around the garage and off they go to work fixing it. They did hope to get it up and running by quality, but that never happened. Don't doubt that that was an expensive crash for the team, and that certainly puts a hole in their cost cap. And I don't know what that cost to fix. Hundreds of thousands of dollars, I imagine. And now there is talk that Logan won't make it to the next race. He will be replaced, perhaps, and the talk yesterday was Mick Schumacher or even Liam Lawson on loan from Red Bull. That is a sad outcome for Logan Sargent. Of course, it was a marvellous weekend for Lando Norris, notching his second win. Let me give you a rundown on what happens after a McLaren win. For a start, the drivers do the press conference, and then they go to the media TV pen, and every man and his dog wants to get an autograph as they escape that. Then they come back to the garage, and I was out the front of pit lane waiting for some time. All the team arrive yesterday. All the team take their place out the front, and then the Crown Prince of Bahrain arrived with Zac Brown. He was here earlier in the day, and. Uh, got these lovely pictures of the pair. But then the Prince addressed all the team, essentially saying that uh, he'd had this great confidence in them and uh, it was just starting to pay dividends and uh, more great things to come. But in the meantime, the trophies had been brought out along with the emptied champagne bottles, well, bubbly bottles. And you can see here that they actually have the name of each race on the bottles. So they're not one bottle for a whole season. And it's a nice souvenir, I guess, for the teams to take back. So a lot of the crew were posing with the bottles and even the medal that was handed out to Lando Norris on the podium. I actually uh, at one stage saw Lando's dad get hold of that medal and uh, put that around his neck. And you'll notice in this picture that all of the crew have P1 hats on. And that's because the team hands them out to everybody after they win a race. And I don't know if that happens every race, but certainly that was the case yesterday. All the crew take their place. Lando arrives. Oscar's there as well. We've got the Crown Prince and Zach Brown taking centre stage. They do a few cheers and then Lando gets up and the whole media crowds around him. His dad pops in for a shot with the trophy. And then I guess Lando gets in his car and jets off home. One thing's for sure, F1 is certainly lapping up the increased competition that we have in the sport and we'll be hoping for more winners for the rest of the season. Uh, what else can I tell you about? Oh, this fella here, he's a crew member for Red Bull. His name is Billy and I got chatting with him on the weekend. And his last name is Jeans, Billy Jeans. And uh, I, look, he gets this all the time, I'm, I'm sure, but uh, he's a follower of mine on one of my platforms. So uh, a bit of a character and certainly is enjoying his time in Formula One. Another thing, Lewis Hamilton is the only driver that was allowed to drive into the paddock. How does that work? Well, normally the drivers park up at the driver's car park, and then they either walk or scooter down to this paddock behind me here, which is where all the uh, engineers and garages are. But on Sunday, the gates were open for the great man to drive inside the paddock, get out of the car, and make the very short walk up to his engineering motorhome. Now I think I have seen that in past years here, but it's only Lewis that does it. Max Verstappen does it too, but he doesn't do it in a road car, he does it in one of these golf buggies. I went out and photographed the podium ceremony for the F1 Academy races, that's the female racing series here. And what struck me was that they don't use Ferrari Trento bubbly. Why? Well, many of the racers are under 18 years of age, many don't drink, and it's seen as um, proper not to have alcohol up on that podium. So what do they use? They use this brand of wine, sparkling wine. And I can tell you, it's at a pretty bargain price. Look at this. And what does it taste like? I've got no idea. But when you're just spraying it around, does it really matter? Well, friends, that does endeth my time here on the seaside in Zandvoort. It's been absolutely miserable for most of the time weather-wise, and it's no better today. But if you have enjoyed this video, I will ask you a favor. Could you please like it? And for those unsubscribed, remedy that situation for me now. Hit the subscribe button. And for a whole lot of extra content, head over here and have a look. Thanks for watching and stay passionate.